In this video, you will see why and when to use the abstract factory pattern and how to use it in Python. You will also learn how it is different from the factory method pattern. If you missed the part about the factory method pattern, go watch that first. In the previous part, you saw the code to implement the factory method pattern in Python. The goal was to move the importer class instantiations to the subclasses. To do this, the factory was subclassed and the subclasses create and return importer instances. This allows us to put generalized code in superclasses and specialized code in subclasses. But it did not help much with fixing open-closed principle violations. Concrete classes still have to be instantiated. This responsibility was put in main. Here you see the instantiation of an XML importer factory class. You could say that this program is configured to import XML files. And perhaps you would create a second program that is configured to import JSON files. Where do we know this from? Do you remember the good old DOS days? There was a utility called pkzip. It zipped files to an archive. And how did you unzip files? You used a second program called pkunzip. My guess is that both programs shared 99% of the code base but are just configured to do different things. So the idea that main is configured to create a certain importer factory is not that strange. And the abstract factory pattern builds further on this idea. Let's say you want to build a converter that converts between XML and JSON. For this we will use the existing import classes and add export classes to the system. There will be two configurations, XML to JSON and JSON to XML. The abstract factory pattern takes these configurations and creates the needed import and export objects. The first thing to do is to add the two exporter classes. Here they are. Until now, the system had a factory to create importers. This factory will be replaced by a new factory that can create both an importer and exporter. As you can see, the factory calls create importer and create exporter. These methods will be implemented in factory subclasses. The subclasses are created. Notice that the XML to JSON factory creates an XML importer and JSON exporter, and the JSON to XML factory creates a JSON importer and XML exporter. The factory subclasses decide what conversion configuration will be used. The only thing that needs to happen now is that somewhere in the code the factory subclasses need to be instantiated. First, let me show you the updated code. To make it fit on the screen, I'll put the importer and exporter classes on the left and the rest of the code on the right. The code is almost ready. Let's create a document class that can convert files. Document takes a converter factory. The convert file function takes import and export file names, gets an importer and exporter, and uses them to convert a document. Of course, in a real system, the importer execute methods should return something to make this work, but I left that part out in this example. Okay, just like before, there is the question. How does the converter factory know what concrete classes to create? The answer is that this is configured in main. This is the place that decides that this program will convert an XML file to a JSON file. And if you run the code, you will see this output. And how would you convert a JSON file to an XML file? You change the configuration and use the JSON to XML factory subclass. The big difference between the factory method pattern and the abstract factory pattern is this. The factory method pattern creates one instance of a class and the abstract factory pattern uses multiple methods so you can create a family of instances. When I first saw factory patterns I had a lot of questions and perhaps you have some too. Write your questions in the comments and perhaps I'll make a video out of them. 
And that's all for this video. Check out more design pattern videos here. Thanks for watching.